The next battery I'm going to test is the Nikkor 3400 milliamp hour uh, 18650. That's a 3.7 volt, 12.6 uh, uh, watt uh, watt hour uh, battery, which is uh, slightly more than the Olight I just tested in the other video, which was 12.2 watt hours. This one here, um, but again, I think it's built around the same uh, battery, the Panasonic 18650B. Uh, so let's take a look at it here and uh, it is a protected battery it's the NL189 that's their uh, part number on it you know typical your typical kind of uh, packaging on it so let's just take it out you know it'd be nice if they gave you a little bit more specs than just you know what you get this little bit that you get in this um, Okay, so let's take it out, and I'm going to compare it, well, let's just measure it out here. What do I got? All right, diameter, 18.51. Now, you can see, let's just start right on the top. Look at the top of that battery. I mean, the shrink tubing looks really not the greatest there. You see little bubbles around the edges here too. Um, uh, right off the bat, you know, 18.49, uh, which is I think a little bit thicker than this. Yeah, 18.30 for the Olight. And uh, already I'm I'm preferring the uh, uh, Olight because uh, just because of the packaging. Look at you know this looks really kind of cheesy. Almost looks like taped or something at the top here. See if I can get you a good focus on there. See that? near the top where the protection of the cell would be and also the wrapping is not the greatest there um, you know it's, it's okay but it's not as good a quality as this uh, battery it's, this battery is like perfectly wrapped you know so uh, already in, in, the, in the construction uh, capability of this uh, you know battery I, I already prefer the Olight just because of the way it looks at the top that's for sure this this shrink wrap they use on it is not the greatest okay so starting with that now let's uh, do a little measurement here let's see how big it is from the top to the bottom I'm just putting a piece of tape on the bottom to keep it from short the calipers from shorting it out right. it is protected against that but I don't want to do it anyway okay we got point sorry six sixty nine point zero six millimeters in length so I believe it's even longer than the Olight. Let's take a look at the Olight quickly. Yeah, 68.76. So um, make sure that you know a 69.09 uh, millimeter battery like this will fit into whatever you're going to put it into because that's quite large. Okay. So next, I'm going to charge it fully and. Uh, uh, then discharge it to see what the actual capacity of the battery is. All right, my Nikkor Intel Charger i4 uh, version 2 charger is telling me that this battery has a full charge at this point. I forgot to weigh it to see how much it weighs, so let's put it on the old scale here and see what we get. And we get 48.3 uh, milligrams, so it's about a, a, a approximately a gram overweight. A little less than a gram overweight, so I would say that's probably the protection circuitry on it. So, um, you know, otherwise, uh, correct weight. So now that uh, I've got it out of the charger, let's just do a quick voltage check on it, see what it charges it up to. Helps if you can see it. And 4.818, sorry, 4.19, so close to 4.20 where it should be. Um, close enough for me and uh, so next I'm going to put it into my uh, IMAX B6 charger and we're going to discharge it fully all the way down uh, to 3 volts and see how many milliamp hours that gives us. Alright we're all set to do a discharge cycle on this to figure out how many milliamp hours there is all the way down to 3 volts. Uh, let's do the start on this and it's seeing the battery so let's go. As you can see, there's a small discrepancy here between the uh, uh, charger and the um, actual uh, meter, which has the leads going closer to the battery. So I think that's just resistance in the wire. Regardless, it's consistent.
Okay, well there's my result from the uh, standard discharge and we've got 3197 which is uh, 86 less uh, milliamp uh, hours than the uh, Olight and 56 milliamp hours less than the standard uh, Panasonic. So I don't know, you can be the judge on that. Now I'm going to try and uh, discharge them. Well, I'm not going to try. I'm going to discharge it below the 2.5 uh, volt setting and see if it actually trips. All right, I'm putting it on the nickel metal hydride discharge setting as it is uh, uh, the only place on this charger that I can set it below 2.5. Uh, so we'll start with that. All right, looks like the cutoff circuit worked uh, within uh, spec. Uh, I thought it was another, I believe, 34 milliamps on top of that. So uh, we can add another 34 milliamps to its storage capability down to that point, which would make it uh, 32, uh, 3220, uh, sorry, 30, 3,231 milli milliamps. Um, now I'm going to do this again here, just to show you what uh, where we're at. Let's reset the battery. As you can see, the charge level is down to zero. So, okay. So let's go back. Not sure how that's going to work here. Let's do a discharge. Yeah. Okay, that triggered the battery. It looks like. So at this point, it'll probably work again. All right, so um, again, within spec, uh, next I'm going to charge it up uh, over the uh, 4.5 volts um, to see if we can uh, actually get it to trigger again. All right, there's a full charge, and obviously there's some redemption there. We got 3.3. Three, three, six seven milliamp hours which is the highest out of all three batteries I've tested it so far um, so basically from a total discharge to a full di full charge is almost exactly the advertised uh, uh, capacity on this 3400 milliamp hour battery so now let's see if we can overcharge it all right here we go with the overcharge and I'll put it on time lapse I'm sure it won't take long to get there though All right, it happened rather quickly there, but the cutoff point was uh, 4 volts, 4.63 volts. A little high, but still a cutoff, and there now we have a con connection break. Uh, battery is showing uh, 427 there, so I'll reset that. Um, take that apart here, and uh, let's just measure it directly. Well, uh, let's see. Yeah, I can. Here, there we go. And battery charge is 427, so... Uh, without the charger being plugged in with influencing that uh, result so 427 428 that's bang on where it should be so uh, protection circuit obviously works next I'm just gonna uh, do a, uh, my light test uh, I'm gonna leave it in the in the in my um, secure tying skyray king here and, and uh, let it run down I think the last one went four hours 45 minutes which is just amazing for a single battery on full power so let's see where this how well this one does all right here we go with a single battery in my secure tying sky ray king here full power i'll zoom that out a little bit more you can see the light and there we go we'll see how long that lasts All right, great test. We got six hours, 33 minutes out of that uh, Nightcore uh, battery, which I expected it to be slightly longer because, hey, we had a uh, larger um, capacity, uh, storage capacity on the test too. So there we are. 
Uh, it looks good so far. Let's see uh, what the actual voltage right now is. I uh, left it in overnight as well after letting it charge out. So we'll see what we get. There's our meter. And just like last time, I get zero when I first connect it. But I think that's just because the, the uh, circuit needs to be tripped. And the way you trip it is just to put it in the charger. So, yeah, still zero. So I'm going to put it in the charger for a second. That should be long enough. Let's see what we get now. There we go, back to life. So you need to apply a charge to reset the circuit. Uh, but when I reset the circuit, and I'm just in there for a second, uh, you can see that the voltage right now is 292, uh, 293. So the battery is going to recover somewhat when it's uh, in a you know disconnected state, which it was overnight. So uh, I suspect that it worked just fine. And again, uh, good result on this battery. Uh, you know, basically at this point, my summary, my review on this would be that hey, it's a great battery. It's got a, a slightly larger um, uh, capacity than the Olight, so I'll give it uh, four out of five. Uh, and I guess I would give, give the Olight the same thing at this point because of the difference between the two capacities on these uh, batteries. But the uh, the reason I'm giving this four out of five stars is because of the crumple zone here. This looks like uh, not really a great wrap job on that and the uh, as you can see on the end it's even the uh, top wrap looks a little bad and it looks like it's cracking here too so not impressed with that um, but I mean you can rewrap these batteries the wrap on this is perfect okay this is the old light and it's perfect so it gets four out of five stars because of the wrap is so good but it loses a star because it's not quite as good uh, a, a battery or high as, a capacity as this one but then again it doesn't advertise it being a higher capacity either this is 12.6 watt hours the Olight says 12.2 uh, watt hours so you know truth in advertising so again I still think I, I like the Olight better because of overall uh, quality of build and uh, you know performance is more than acceptable anyway okay so yes, Nikkor slightly larger, uh, slightly higher capacity, uh, slightly better performance. Uh, build quality is poor though compared to the OLED. That's it for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor, click on the like button right down here. And uh, you know, if you wish to subscribe to my channel, just click on this link up here, and that should subscribe you to the the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel. Um, Okay, again, thank you very much for your time and watching.